Good evening everyone, it's Christine here and I'm wanting to share what I'm thinking for my upcoming Roxy Journal of Stitchery piece which has the prompt of a tree or a bird's nest or both. Now I've done a number of bird's nests in my other pieces, little tiny ones made out of scraps of thread with little seed pearl eggs in them. So I'm thinking a tree for this one. I did have some smaller trees in my chateau garden piece, but I'm thinking a large um, focal point tree would be great to do. So I was having a look around for some inspiration. I first of all thought of the magic faraway tree, um, but I couldn't kind of find an image that I wanted to stitch for that. And then I had a look at some tapestries and there's this beautiful tree of life tapestry. It's a public domain, so anyone can feel free to use it as part of their works. Um, it's on the Met website um, and it's from the 17th century. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. This is just a printout, it'd be amazing to see it in real life but it's got all birds and fruits and mythical creatures um, it's just lovely it's got the sun and the moon it's got even the fishes down below water I love the unicorns the deer so wouldn't this be a fun one to, um, if you were able to print on fabric or do a transfer to fabric and then um, stitch over some of the elements or you could even try and stitch it all from scratch, but that would be, <laughs> that would be a lot of work. So that was one thing I contemplated, but I haven't gone with that option, but sharing that in case someone else is interested in doing that. What I went with was, took inspiration from this design, which is a Celtic um, version of a tree of life. Um, and what I did was got a piece of linen. This was from a recent linen haul. In fact, I'd made the video for this Thrifty Thursday, but I'll post it next Thrifty Thursday because I just missed the, missed the window. So it's there, it's loaded, it's ready to go next Thursday. So you can see my amazing haul of um, linen. This was just one of the many, many pieces. Um, and what I did was, um, actually used a staple and just stapled it in place onto the, the paper. And then I put this up against a window um, with the light outside. And then using my friction marker, which is over here, or friction pen, um, which comes out with heat applied to it, so an iron or a hairdryer, I just traced the outline of the design. Um, you can see a couple of places where my pen went a little bit whoopy. Um, but that doesn't matter in a few bits where I've kind of just um, re-enhanced the outline. And then I've also put on some little guides where I want to put some, some lines or follow some, some shapes as well. So it's a beautiful rounded design. It will fit um, just on my scroll um, that I'm creating or the, be a consistent panel size with my other, other pieces. But yeah, that's a really effective way to transfer from a design onto fabric if you've got a relatively thin fabric. Now with this, if I don't want it to kind of um, pucker and have other, other issues when I stitch it, I'll either need to attach it to a thicker backing, which I've done with a lot of my pieces so far, or put it in a hoop. So I think I'm going to put it into a hoop. This is one I also got in my recent haul. It actually had a silk um, embroidered, um, silk ribbon embroidery on silk in it. Um, so I'm going to keep my design because that will be a nice guide as I go and then I'm just going to pop this into the embroidery. I don't often work with hoops but I think for this one and because the fabric is very very thin it will be helpful to do that. It's not perfectly centered but I think that's all right. Maybe I'll try, try and get it a bit more just doesn't matter because it's not going to be displayed in the hoop, although that's one option. If you do have some old hoops, you can use them to display your pieces as well. It's a bit too far over that way now. Oops, just bring it down. You'll have to excuse me. I've got my pyjamas on with little bunny rabbits um, on them. They were, I think, last year's Easter. Easter pyjamas. We get new pyjamas at Easter. Um, and, yeah, they have cute little bunnies on them. And a, a scene that is actually leaves and... 
other little botanicals that almost almost match with it. But I was feeling like a bit of TLC and a bit of self-care um, this evening. We had a very sad um, farewell to a colleague um, today. It was her memorial and she passed away far, far too young. Um, after a tragic, tragic accident, um, she was working over in London um, and yeah, a tragic accident occurred and she, she passed away and today um, was her memorial um, her, with her family in Brisbane. Um, so wasn't able to attend in person, but um, her family very kindly made it um, open to those of us that had worked with her and called her a, called her a friend. Um, but just, yeah, tragic when we first heard the news and um, yeah, tragic, but today was also a really beautiful celebration of, of her life. And I think it probably informed a little bit my selection of this um, this piece because the tree of life has a beautiful symbolism of of yeah of life going on beyond. So yeah, feeling feeling the need to just be very gentle with myself this weekend, and I think some some lovely stitchery is right um, right up my alley. So yeah, had a nice warm shower, put nice pajamas on. And thought I was pondering, what do I come on? Do I mention it? Do I not mention it? But hey, this is about being real about where we are in our lives, and that's that's something that has happened, and something that we will, yeah, we'll continue to to grapple with. But we'll remember and celebrate the amazing person that she was. So, tree of life. I guess the next thing we need to do is to select some colors. So I'm thinking of using variegated threads because that way I won't have to use a whole lot of individual threads to get that sort of variation in the stem. And I've got, yeah, I've got regular browns if I need them, but I've got this variegated one and got another box of variegated ones over here as well. And I've also got this one. So this one's one of the Razzle from Wonderfill, and so it's quite glossy. And then this one, I picked up a whole lot of these for, I think they were $3 from the Sewing Lair, brand new. Um, and they're Milford Satin Two Ply Double Mercerized Cotton. Excuse the rustling, we'll just have to battle our way into them. So they're Semco, okay, yep. I like other threads. Take that off, put that in my little sewing, sewing container where I'm keeping all my little haberdashery bits and pieces for when I make a sewing journal. Just trying to work out where this, ah, oh, there we go. Just having a look at how often the colour changes in this to see that it's not sort of too long of sections. But no, that's a nice level of, of changing. It's not as, not as shiny as the Razzle Dazzle. But I think, um, given I've got so much of it, um, I think I might give that one, give that one a go. So I'll put the Razzle Dazzle back. Um... So that will be my, for the trunk, which is most of it. And then we need to look at something for the leaves. So again, I've got some greens that I could use for the leaves. And that could look quite nice, that more muted color. I think that's too bright. And I think that's too bright as well. Um, so we might keep this one out. I've got a spare container here. I like to use these little repurposed um, containers that would have been once been used for takeaway. These ones weren't actually used for takeaway. They're just in a big stack from my partner's parents when they were clearing some things out. Excuse me, I'm just having a sip of tea. It is a tea called, what's it called? It's called Peace from the, um, the Puka range, the P-U-K-K-A range. Nice and soothing. So I think we've got everything we need out of there. Again, I just think that's a bit too 
too vibrant. So I'm going to pop that over there. Um, we didn't need those ones, so I'll get rid of that one as well. I've got some threads here that I got from Melanie um, Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles on Instagram, who sells things from her personal um, collection. And I'm quite interested in these little, very thin threads in here that I think might be in one of the other bags. So these are generally things that she's used some of, but I just want to have a look at these little ones. They're very fine. They're quite, these ones are quite tangled, but let's see if we can get one out so we can, so we can have a look. Or maybe these are all, all joined. I'm starting to think they might not be individual pieces. I think they might be a large piece. So let's just have a look. They feel like they might be silk, silk thread. They're very fine. And they've got quite a bit of, you probably can't even see the color variation in them. It's quite fine indeed. So they could be interesting. I need to untangle those, but let's just pop them over here. And then there's these ones as well that I think are maybe a slightly. Let's just have a look. These ones are wound on something. Similar hand wash, pure wool, but I don't know if those ones are pure wool. What does this say? Hand wash, pure silk. So I, yeah, I reckon those other ones are silk. And I think this is probably, oh, no, these even look thinner than even those ones. I wonder how much. But yeah, beautiful color. You can actually see, yeah, the color variation much better on those ones. And they just feel, they do feel lovely. And it might be nice if the leaves are those sort of alternating, alternating muted tones. I don't want to do something really bright for this, I don't think. Yeah, I've got these ones, but they're way too thick, I think, so they can go back into the back into the mix for another day. I've got these wool ones, but I don't think I want the texture of wool for this. That again is too thick. So let's have a look what else is in this bag. I love getting these little mixed bags of supplies because it gives me fun things to play with. I don't have to invest a lot and it's, um, yeah, it's saving. I don't think Mel would be throwing these to landfill if they didn't sell. I'm sure she'd keep them and, and use them, but yeah, it's just nice to get repurposed goodies. So there's plenty in there. That's probably similar weight to the first lot we looked at and it's the more greens. Again, it's even more, much more muted than the Razzle Dazzle. So that's a possibility. I don't think we need the yellow. And I don't think we need this one, which is just a floss over dyed 100% cotton. So that's just a variegated. This one's lovely, but I think it's yeah too thick for this project, unless you can break it down. Robin Alexander space dyed threads. Just having a look at the end of it. If you break it down, it would be very small strands. So I think that's meant to be used in its, its full form. So I'll put that aside. That one again is too thick. So I'll put that variegated one aside. Um, and then we've got this one, which is definitely thicker than the first one, thicker than that one and thicker than this one. And would it be too similar to the, the branches? Hmm. I think, I think I'm erring towards this green if I've got enough of it. And if not, I might need to find something that's, that's matching, but there's a fair bit of green there. I'll just have to check there long enough. Well, they'll be about lengths like that, which is probably a good length for silk anyway. But I think there should be enough um, to use here. I'll keep, put, pop that one away, I think, because I think that will be a good, a good contrast, but not too glary. Okay. 
Okay, so don't know if we want to start off and start doing some some stitching. I'll just refit that. It just doesn't feel quite quite taut enough. Is it? Okay. Now I hope this won't be too thicker twine. But let's see how we go. I'll just need to pick a needle that's got decent sized head on it. This basket, this little basket, glass basket was my Nana's and I've just put a little um, pin cushion in it. It's also somewhere where I can keep my thimbles and other, other bits and pieces. Okay, so that needle um, fits the it's a thread through it comfortably. Put these out of the way. And so I guess we'll want to with the stem have to work out kind of somewhere to start, but I'm thinking sort of long and short stitches overlapping. We'll see how we go. I hope you've had a good week. I hope um, you have a restful or creative weekend planned or whatever it is that you would like to you'd like to have. I'll leave that down so we can look at that together. Okay. It's always hard starting, I figure. It's always hard putting in that, that first stitch and working out what it is that you're you're doing. But you've got to start somewhere. So I guess I don't want to go too far in a stitch. Don't even know if that's too far in a stitch, but we shall see. I should have done that more as a continuous row rather than overlapping. I'm just pondering. I don't mind it because it sort of gives it a little bit, little bit more texture. A bit of fluff that's come out. With the next one, I might try it actually just coming, coming back towards that first one. my thread quite so long and I don't need to have such a, a short tail on it. Oops, a bit of my hair's caught in it. So I haven't had a chance yet to catch up on what other people are doing for their tree or bird nest prompt. But as always I just love seeing all the different different interpretations. I know quite a few people have already done done trees. But I think it's fine anyway. They can either just choose to um, have a bit of a break or work on some other aspects or they can always do another tree or another another bird's nest. So it's not really a problem. So I'm now just looking at the design and thinking, will I just come down again? Just having a look how much I've got left of the dark. So I've got the dark for quite a ways. I'm actually thinking I might stitch up um, the side. If I can pop out the top. Yeah, I'm really happy with this this imagery for for this week or this two week stitching period. It'll be a nice meditative piece to do. And 
sending my love out to you as well if you're dealing dealing with grief or loss or remembering others. I hope I didn't um, yeah didn't trigger anyone with my my little reflection at the start. The big message is just to yeah love our loved ones, love our friends, let them know how special they are while we have them alive and, and with us and when they can hear it directly themselves. And to do be present in all of those moments of your life because it is it really is a precious thing that we have right here. And your company um, with me, even if you are continents away and time zones away and hours away when you're watching it, your company and your um, camaraderie is, yeah, it's something that's really special to me. So thank you. Even though I don't know who you are, many of you, um, yeah, just the fact that you choose to watch and many of you um, stitch along, have your own project stitching away joining me it's it's lovely I do actually feel your presence with me when I'm when I'm stitching I don't I don't feel don't feel alone it's interesting I feel like I've got this wonderful stitching fraternity around me is that the right fraternity I don't know if that's the right term stitching community let's say So when the colour starts to change, I'll have a think about what it is I want to do with the colour change because I think I want the outline here to be dark. So I love that I'm using one of my new bits of old linen. It's nice to put something straight into use. I've washed it all, ironed it all ready for um, either, well, I'm airing it for a few days just to make sure it's all fully, fully dry um, before packing it away or sorting it out and packing it so that I know which are the ones to keep, which are the ones to use, which are the ones that can be cut up for bits of embroidery but it's nice to put something immediately to use. So it was an amazing haul of linen from an entire family of many generations. So again, feel incredibly privileged to be able to have it and honor it and, and use it, use it in my stitchery. Sorry, I was just looking at the design and working out if I missed something. Sometimes it's hard to tell where the gaps are and where the actual features features are. But I worked that one out. Sorry, am I yep, staying on camera? So I can hear the rain coming down outside. I think the weather forecast said we're in for a wet, wet, possibly stormy weekend here. What's the weather like in your part of the world? Many of you will be coming into beautiful spring weather which would be delightful having a look at the design here where these this leaf there's sort of a branch leaf branch that comes out so I think I might just actually continue the stem oops did I miss yes oh no that's right that's up there
Sorry for any shadows, it's evening here, so I've just got my lights on. Oops. Just trying not to pierce any of the thread with my needle if I'm popping out the same, same hole. I might go to the top here. I guess I could keep following around and then just start to make my way back down once I get some other lighter colours. It's nice using a, a thread that I've got so much of. Um, I'd feel I don't have to then be precious. I feel a little bit precious with those razzle Razzle threads. Not sure even how many meters he's on one of those those rolls. But I think for all of us, we need to kind of learn to just um, yeah use the use the precious things as well, use them and enjoy them, celebrate them. I didn't actually want to go up there because that's the stem of the leaf so I might just take that stitch out I'll take the one at the back out as well let's re-thread ourselves Here. I won't go for too long with you. Um, just thought I'd show you getting started. We might even do a leaf just to make sure we're happy with the, um, the selection of the, the leaf colour. And then I can come back to you once I've done a bit more, a bit more stitching. And we can do some more stitching together. Hopefully here I can get down to the other the other colour colour tone soon. If you didn't want to stitch the whole of this thing and maybe just outline it, you could even paint um, paint the tree once you've drawn it on. Um, and then just outline stitch it or you could outline stitch it and then then paint it to get a change in colour. So now we can see the change in colour to the lighter colour. So now I can just work out where do I do I want to put yeah, I can put some lighter colour possibly along the underside of, of that branch.
Where else might I place some? Some lighter maybe down the... I can even probably put some... Continue the lighter up here maybe. Take it down the center down here. Oops. Then I think we're changing into the next next colour. As I'm doing it, I'm just looking at it to see where the, so that's the overlapping and then this one goes behind. So just checking those things. Not that it would matter if I got one of them wrong, but just trying to broadly, broadly follow the design. I wonder what type of tree the Tree of Life is meant to be, or is it a totally fictional, fictional tree? Come down here. Oh, I just realized I think that's meant to be a leaf down there, isn't it? So in fact, I just need to backtrack a couple of stitches. So I can pull this out without causing any issues. Or too many issues. Okay, so we just need to get our friction marker and yeah, so that's just meant to be a leaf, a leaf shape there. It's interesting because the design actually sort of melds the brown into the leaves, but I think I'm going to use the the green for the leaves. Oops, sorry, I just bumped you. I just um, bumped you when I was pulling my pulling my thread, and this is a hair again caught in it. Um, might stitch down the. So I'm there. Where will I jump to next if I've done that stem? Could come up the other side, I suppose. Could just come up next to it, maybe. But I won't do the stitches at exactly the same intervals. I'll just...
well. Oops, where is it? It's the problem when you're going a bit too relaxedly and you're not really thinking about where your next stitch needs to needs to place. But I think I'll continue, I'll do the outer the other edge just so that it's distinct from the other branch. I'll start to do the outer around here. And then I might um, stop this and we might move on and do a leaf. Um, I can just actually leave the thread. I'll just pop the thread through over here out of the way. Just put it through on the edge. Um, and we'll need a smaller needle for the other thread because it's much, much finer. And we'll need to see if we can get a piece neatly out of it. So is this all one long? I thought maybe they would be smaller pieces in this, but maybe it really is one gigantic ream. Okay, so probably don't want to take too much in one go. And then we'll want a nice little slight one. This one's quite good, I think. Okay, so I've just tied a little knot at the end. Tail bit. Okay. Hopefully it won't be too tangly because it has been a bit sort of raggedly wound up. Um, where will we do our first leaf? Maybe we'll start with this one here. So I'm wondering, will I do? Oh, sorry, I just bumped the camera again. Oh, and I've just caught on my finger. Rough hands. About as clumsy as I can be. <laughs> Bang the camera and unthread my needle. Like, come on, Christine. If I should have done a sort of a center spine down the down the leaves. I'm gonna experiment with this one and then we can always unstitch it if we if we don't like the effect. I'm just going and sort of doing interspaced slanty bits that I hope will make the effect of a, a leaf. Maybe I will come down the, the center from the top, but maybe I'll first of all just fill in the little, oops, what's happened there? It feels like I've just pulled, maybe I popped up through the same hole. Try and fill in that top little section. I'm not sure how well you can see bit hard when it's such a fine thread as well. Okay, so I've filled in that top little segment. Now 
I'm going to work my way down and try and fill in the other segments. Silk thread definitely goes nicely through the fabric. Again, I think I'm using a needle that's bigger than the thread, so it's protecting the thread by creating a hole that's um, yeah, than bigger than the thread, so the thread doesn't kind of tear or catch as it goes through the fabric. Only catches on my fingers, which are too rough on my skin. Even though I always resolutely put on some hand cream before before stitching. So I can see the colour variation in the thread. I'm not sure how well it will show up on, on camera. But I like it that it is that sort of greeny, goldy um, tones, but not super, super bright. But it does have a nice, a nice shininess to it, but not as much as the Razzle Dazzle does. And I think I like the fineness of it compared to the trunk, even though it's going to take a bit of time to do each leaf. Um, this is a two week period again for this prompt, so I don't mind. And I don't mind having the quiet reflective time either to, to stitch away on this one. So we'll get this leaf finished on both sides and then I'll I'll let you go. I won't keep you for any longer. But do be kind to yourselves and kind to your loved ones. If you have the chance, give your loved ones an extra hug. Both of the human and the furry kind. Travis is such a sweetheart, he just absolutely senses sort of, yeah, your emotional state and he was, yeah, sticking very, very close. have a very supportive bunch at work and so yeah feel very lucky to be working with people who are very caring people very passionate about what we do we all sort of have a shared passion for the the nature of the public purpose work that we do um, and so we tend to be like-minded souls and very caring folks as well I think sometimes things hit even harder in a group in a group like that where yeah there's that closeness there's that collegiality that um, those deep friendships that develop even in a in a workplace um, we're a relatively contained team about 80 80 people so we all know each other um, obviously when we we're all working in the office um, together there was more of that sort of face-to-face -face, um, contact but there's a lot of a lot of contact that even still occurs when we're not not in the office. So I'm just doing stitches just back to the center. And in fact, I don't know if I am gonna to have to mark out the center. We'll see how it looks when I finish with the thread as to whether I need to need to do that. Almost there. I think I've just got to finish a couple at the very bottom, so I'll just have to dart 
start down when I'm done up here. Here and down here. And otherwise I think that's that's quite nice. So if I did, let's just while we're down here, I'll just put a stem, not a stem stitch, just a a long couple of stitches for the stem. So that's the stem in now. And then I wonder if I do go up the center and put in just the, the vein of the leaf. It's got a stitch that's, oh well that one's come out. I'll just have to catch that one, I think in the center as well. Probably pulled through the fabric. Okay, I've caught that, which was good. So if you have a loose loop like that, you can always catch it. Hmm, what's happened there? Is that the loose loop popping again through the fabric? Not sure. down to where I started the, the vein. So yeah, there does seem to be one that's just sort of caught a little bit in the centre, but sorry, I think I just went off, off camera. So that's, that's the first little leaf. As I say, there's a little bit in the centre there that might be slightly skewy, but I think it's actually pretty good. And I think I might need to just put another couple of stitches more on the round of the bottom of the leaf hard because you've got that outline. Um, I might even have to come back when I remove all the outline with some heat when it's all stitched and just see if there's any leaves that need a bit more a bit more outlining around them. I think that's that's pretty good. So lots to do on this but that's that's the start. We're heading for something that looks like that. We'll see how we go. That, all of this is about the about the journey, it's about the stitches, it's not about the, the finished product, it's about enjoying enjoying learning, extending myself. This is definitely extending myself with some new threads um, I haven't used before. Um, and just working out the stitches as I go and working out the sort of the colours as well. So take care everyone, thanks so much for watching, thanks for listening, thanks as always um, for your love and your care. Take care everyone, bye.